Hi, it's Chris with Greensphere, and today I want to talk quite a bit about uh, summer dormancy, drought stress, and cool season grass. So what cool season grass is, is any grasses that grow in pretty much the northern half of the country, uh, even down into Georgia. It's your rye, your fescue, your bluegrass. So all of the turf grass that we have in our lawns in New England are considered cool season grasses. Now they have all kinds of issues when it comes to the summer heat. Specifically, they, they want to go dormant. So in periods of high heat, low rainfall, lack of irrigation, you'll see a lawn start to go dormant. And what that means is it's gonna lose its green color and start to turn more straw-like, brown, yellow. It's taking its nutrients back down into the, uh, the root zone, where it's gonna store them up until the fall when the temperatures are, more, temperatures are more favorable and that lawn will be able to recover from the summer stress. So dormancy isn't an issue. That's a very normal uh, reaction to the summer heat. The issue that we have is drought stress though. So more prolonged um, time periods without rain and high heat. That's where you're gonna see things go from dormant to actually dying out. So there's obviously a very big difference between dormancy and dying out. Dormancy, as I mentioned, isn't an issue. Dieback, of course, is. So like this picture here, this is over a septic system. These areas are dead. If we don't reseed these, they're gonna fill in with weeds next year. So this is an example of something that's gone from dormancy to complete dieback. A good telltale sign of when it's dead versus dormant is the blades are broken off. You've got bare dirt basically. So that turf grass that's just sheared off at the surface, it's not coming back. So there's a couple other factors that also affect the, um, the dieback rate of turf grass. And those are things like your soil conditions. So as I mentioned, that's a septic system there. The soil below that thin layer of loam is gonna be very sandy because it's your septic. So that area is not gonna retain a lot of moisture. It's gonna dry out a lot faster. So when it dries out faster, you know, of course that's gonna put the lawn under more stress. So you're gonna see your dieback. Well, first you'll see your dormancy over your septic area. And the first areas of dieback are typically gonna be over a septic area. Or like this picture here, where this is along a uh, roadway. So along roads, driveways, sidewalks, you're gonna have a lot of radiated heat off of that. And that radiated heat's gonna cause that soil to, again, dry out much faster. You're gonna see dieback there before you would say in the middle of the lawn. Of course, there's other microclimates around your property that, that are gonna affect the rate at which your soil dries out, you know, mainly being a sunny area versus a shady area. Shady areas don't really tend to go dormant because they're able to retain their moisture. It keeps the grass a lot happier. So there's some other factors that also affect your turf's ability to survive this dormancy. Uh, one of them is compaction. So the picture we showed along the uh, roadway, you're gonna have, say, foot traffic there along the sidewalk. You'll have foot traffic, you know, maybe some vehicle traffic. Definitely gonna have mower traffic along the edges because that's where the mower has to go week after week to cut up to, you know, the edge of the lawn. So the more compacted your soil is, the less moisture is able to infiltrate it. So as things are drying out, they're gonna become compacted anyway. The more pressure you have on it, the faster that's gonna become compacted, the quicker it's gonna dry out, the more likely you are to have dieback in that area. So some other factors that are gonna affect your lawn's ability to survive dormancy is mower height. We see it all the time with homeowners maintaining their lawn. Maybe they don't wanna do it as often, so they let it grow long, thinking that's great, you know, my lawn's storing up moisture, and they're gonna cut it short so I don't have to do it again for a few weeks. Well, think about what you're doing there. You're letting it produce all this capacity to produce food for itself by photosynthesis and then cutting it off. So now you have this you know, buffet that you completely take away from it and leave the grass nice and short. A couple of things are gonna happen. You're not gonna crowd out weeds. So weeds are gonna move into short lawns a lot faster than they will to a, than a uh, taller lawn. Your soil is gonna dry out a lot faster and you're severely, severely stressing that turf by cutting it so short. You never wanna cut off more than a third of the grass blade per mowing. 
So let your lawn get to four inches, cut it to three. Don't cut it to two, you've just cut off 50% of its food capacity. In the summer, don't ever cut your lawn shorter than three inches. It's, it's not gonna look any more unmanicured if you let it get a little longer, but it is vital to the survival of that grass to not put into additional stress by cutting it too short. So, um, what happens during, to your soil during this period of drought? So we talked a lot about dormancy and dieback and some about compaction. So while that lawn is busy going dormant, that soil is drying out and it's becoming compacted. More and more compacted, the drier it gets. So the reason why this is an issue is think of like a ball of clay. A moist ball of clay is very pliable. Leave that out in the sun for a while, it becomes hard as a rock. Throw that in a glass of water, it's not gonna absorb that water again. Your soil is the exact same thing. Clay is actually a component of loam. You allow that soil to dry out, it's gonna harden. The harder it is, the harder it is for moisture to penetrate. Of course, the harder it becomes, the denser it becomes, so the roots can't spread, which is again putting that lawn under more stress. So we mentioned mower traffic, foot traffic. These are things that are gonna increase compaction. So when you're in a period of drought, you're already going through compaction in your soil. So the more traffic you have on it, the higher the probability is that you're gonna have some dieback in those areas. So you've got dormant turf, maybe some dead spots. So what do you need to do about it to remedy it? You know, as I already mentioned, that dormant turf will come back but you still have that compacted soil. So the very best thing you can do for a dormant stand of grass is to aerate it. What you're gonna do is loosen up that soil, allow those roots to spread, allow morning dew, rain, nutrients to get down into that root zone, and that grass is gonna recover a whole heck of a lot faster. So, I mean, rule of thumb, all lawns benefit from aeration. Lawns it will become compacted. You should really aerate on a yearly basis to relieve compaction. There's other factors that add to compaction as well too. It's rain, irrigation, snow load, you know, the dryness we've already talked about, foot traffic, pets, any of these things are gonna compact your soil. So the looser your soil is, the more the roots can spread, the more they can uptake nutrients, the healthier stand of grass you'll have. So anytime you're gonna aerate, that's also the perfect time to overseed. So even if you have a, a nice stand of grass that's just dormant, if you're gonna go through the trouble of aerating, overseed at the same time. It's gonna get down into those holes that the aeration plugs have left behind. It's gonna help to continuously fill that turf back in because always remember, the best way to avoid weeds is a thick stand of grass. It's not herbicides, it's not pesticides, it's thick grass. The thicker your grass, the more it shades the soil, crowds out the weeds. So if you're gonna aerate, please go ahead and overseed at the same time. So you've got dead patches in that dormant grass as well too. The solution is still to aerate. Those dead patches, what we would do when we're aerating and overseeding is just hit those patches you know, extra hard, maybe go over them twice with an aerator, really loosen that soil up to be able to get plenty of seed into it get good ground contact, make sure that seed can root. If you were just to spread seed across the surface of a lawn without aerating, you're wasting your time and money. So never ever overseed without aerating first. If you have a large scale dead area, you know, you've lost your entire front lawn, the whole septic system burnt out, you're still gonna wanna aerate, you're gonna wanna overseed, but you're gonna to wanna to take it a step further and instead of just broadcast overseeding, you should slice seed it. Now what slice seeding is, it's using this machine here, looks kind of like a, a lawnmower, but underneath that, that has vertical blades that's gonna make vertical cuts into the surface of the soil. As it makes those cuts, this hopper is gonna drop seed down into those slits and there's like a brush on the backside that kind of sweeps it into the ground. So what that's gonna allow you to do is, one, with the aeration, you're gonna loosen up the soil. Two, slice seed it to get the soil into the ground to ensure you have good ground contact and a lot of it. You're gonna get a lot better results on a large scale dead area 
by slice seeding than you would just over seeding. So, um, slice seeding is also a fantastic service to do in areas that, like for us as a company, that we can't aerate. And there's a couple reasons for that. Um, typically, it's shallow irrigation lines. We see this a lot in new housing developments, new construction. That's a whole other topic for another video of why you typically have shallow lines there. But we can't aerate them because if we were, they would, have, they would look like Swiss cheese and you'd have water geysers spout, spouting up all over your lawn. Uh, and then the other situation is uh, areas that there are dog fences. Maybe the dog fence can't be identified, you don't know where it is, we don't want to go cutting into that and uh, again making Swiss cheese out of that. So slice seeding is a fantastic option for areas that we can't aerate. But wait a minute, I just told you don't ever seed without aerating. Thank you for paying attention. I'm going to address that. So areas that we can aerate, what we're going to do there is do a liquid aeration. This has come about in uh, you know, kind of a newer product, um, especially for you know, the homeowner market. Uh, golf courses have been using this, this type of products for a long time where they can't go out and just aerate the entire fairway. But what a liquid aeration is going to do, it's a two-part process. The first part is we apply this uh, liquid fat reduction to it. It's a biostimulant and what it does is breaks down the fat at the surface of the soil. What thatch is, is dead roots and shoots of grass that builds up at the soil, creates a mat. And what that's going to do is that's going to suck up your moisture, suck up your fertilizer, and not let it get down into the soil. So this biostimulant is going to start to break down that thatch layer. Now in a mechanical aeration, just by plugging the holes in it, that's going to break up that thatch layer as well. So we're doing the same thing with both. But the second part of this process is now the biostimulant that infiltrates down into the soil, binds to the soil, and basically expands, loosening the soil. So you're gonna get that same loosening effect below the surface with the, uh, the liquid aeration as you do with a mechanical aeration. So by combining a slice seed and a liquid aeration, you can get all the benefits of an aeration and overseeding. So there's really no areas that we can't do a proper aeration and oversee uh, service to. So, um, you've gone through the trouble of aerating, you've seeded, you can stop right there, but you've already gone through that much work. There's a couple of additional steps that you can do to really ensure that you have phenomenal results from your aeration oversee. So the first one would be, uh, this is a perfect time to apply dehydrated compost and what dehydrated compost is is exactly what it sounds like it's organic matter that's been composted and dehydrated so we buy it in 50 pound bags and we apply it just like a fertilizer we've been using the barefoot organics product for I think six years now it's a phenomenal product it does a great job of building your soil structure getting that organic matter back into your soil helps to improve the water holding capability of your soil. And so while you're aerating, you've got all those plugs pulled, all that exposed subsurface area, get some compost in there. The compost is gonna get right down into the root zone. The grass will be very happy for it. Same thing with a slice seed. You've got all those slits in the ground, let's get some compost in there. And you'll improve your soil structure and also protect the new seed that you're spreading as well too. So it's just one step further to really ensure that you can get good results. And then the last service we would recommend is uh, the application of a moisture manager. We use a product called Hydrotain. Hydrotain is an organic product. Again, goes down like a fertilizer. And what that's gonna do is get into those holes, those slits, and it absorbs water vapor from the air, from morning dew, from rain, and it's gonna store that water vapor in the soil and slowly release it back. And the reason why that's important is it's gonna keep your lawn damp. It's going to reduce your watering needs by up to 50%. That's not just something I'm saying, that's a proof of fact. I've proved that personally on my own lawn. Um, during a period of drought, I shut my irrigation off for the month of August and didn't lose a lawn where in years past I had lost it every year because it was my septic area. Uh, it's a phenomenal product. So you're gonna reduce your water consumption by up to 50% which saves water saves money and it's keeping that new seed wet 
so you're going to get better results out of the seating you're doing. So just to recap, there's a few different things you should be doing to help your lawn recover from summer drought stress. Aeration, overseed if you're going through the hassle of aerating, slice seed the large dead areas or areas you can't aerate, liquid aeration for areas you can't aerate, dehydrated compost for all of it, hydrotain for all of it. A lot of inputs needed to keep a full season grass healthy, but never mind the aesthetic benefits of a lawn, by keeping that grass healthy, you're doing a whole heck of a lot more for your little corner of the world than just making it look green because the lawn's producing a boatload of oxygen on a daily basis and also cooling your environment around you. So there are a lot of benefits to keeping your lawn healthy and happy going into the fall. So hopefully you learned something and if you have any questions on aeration overseed, is my lawn dormant, is it dead, what should I do, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Leave any comments below and as always, please subscribe to us. You never miss any tips of me sitting out in the sun and hopefully educating you on your landscape. So thank you very much and have a great day. I'll see you again soon.